This is Weirdly Enough, your regular podcast for strange stories and amazing facts. Delivered straight to your favorite podcast directory and at weirdlyenough.com. Now, here are your hosts, Andy and Len. Hello everyone and welcome to another thrilling installment of the Weirdly Enough podcast. I'm Andy Kane. I'm joined by Len Johnson today. All right. Hello. We're talking today about black-eyed kids. The only thing black-eyed I know is that black-eyed, well, that thing with Will dot I dot am guy. You know, black-eyed peas. Yes, you yeah. Know, big for a, a while and kind of, I don't know, are they still big? They, I don't think so. They were big for a while, the black-eyed peas. They had a song called Dirty Bit. Dirty Bit. Um, Very odd. Yes, they were big for a while, like weren't they? Yeah. The yeah black eye, was your good. woman in Black Eyed Peas? I think your woman was, yeah. Ah, your woman, I your she, she was good. Too. Was your man not, I? Yeah, he was. <laughs> Why do you call the woman that was in Black Eyed Peas? It was she, you, you, I can't remember. I can't, see, that's just the thing. I, I think I'm not going on it, but I'm starting to yeah. do that thing of. Because I used to look at her and think. Why are you with these other clowns? Because you're a bit better than that. Yeah, she, yeah. Her stuff was quite good, and she went solo. I still can't remember the name. She was that. a good singer, um, but then you were kind of getting into the song, and then you'd have some idiot like doing this awful kind of robbing off there, like bit. kind of dirty it's like, bit. It's like you're kind of sabotaging us, lassies. Yeah, uh-huh. you know, <laughs> singing like you know. Oh, I'm that sure. was a thing for a while. He used to get like these lassies, very attractive, good singers. Yeah, that used to know songs. song. Yeah, get ended. Uh-huh. And then um, you'd have some guy go dirty bit. Dirty. It's, it's really, <laughs> dirty it's like bit. what? It just yeah. There's a song by Estelle called "American Boy." Oh yes, and yeah, it's yeah. it's a really good wee song. Yeah, 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 yeah. And when you hear it on radio too, yeah, they yeah. play it without. She's like, there's some rapper in it. Ah, uh, yeah. But yeah. on radio too, they don't have the rapper because it's yeah, for yeah. a radio two audience. But when you hear it with the rapper, it's like dreadful. But you, we hear oh, with her, it's pretty song. good, yeah. yeah it's quite that's, good. that's a classic example. Do you know what I was thinking the other day? I'd say this, again, this is going off topic a wee bit. I wouldn't worry. But um, you say you're your woman, Adele. Yes. Do you not think all her songs sound exactly the same? Yeah, they do. They're all sort of like variations in this. They're all the about the, theme, the, yeah. the topic is, is always the same. Peppa Pig! She's always, it, she's always singing about how some lad broke her heart. Yeah. And it all sounds exactly the same. It's all got the same kind of piano off, Fred. The videos all look the same. But you have to like her. But you have to like her. Because she's strong, you say, so if you don't, yeah. don't like her... It's, it's kind of the pit bull thing all over again. It is know? the pit bull yeah. thing, yeah. I was the boy, like, like he just... He was working um, for the Inland Revenue or something, and he just knocked off yeah. a few drinks on Friday and stayed out a wee bit too long. Yeah. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. kind of, you know, he'd maybe been hanging out, out with younger members of staff. Well, it, and they'd sort of drag him to Thompson's Guards or something like that. He'd been to the barber at lunchtime. Got yeah, yeah, yeah. Got a good wet shave on yeah. the head and decided, yeah. no, I'm, I'm going to stay out now. Don't have time to go home and change out of the suit, but... He, so, yeah. do you know what the problem was? He went wrong because um, he was under a lot of stress. He got promoted. It was maybe about yeah. two months mm-hmm. for him. His, his wife left him because she, she ran off of like a personal trainer. <laughs> So he's just, he's having a bit of a midlife crisis. That's what he looks like anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think a whole, whole backstory there. Oh, yeah. So, black-eyed kids. I have no idea what this is about, so you're going to have to tell me. What, not to be confused with the Black Eye Club. What's the Black Eye Club? To tell you the truth, I'm, I'm kind of wishing I'd maybe done it about the Black Eye Club, because right. it's actually more of an interesting topic. Yeah. Well, maybe they I don't know if did. Uh, the Black Eye Club is this idea, is if you ever notice lots of sl- celebrities right, okay. running around with black eyes. Yes. Normally, like, they're, they're right eye. Yeah. That's supposed to be um, told with the Illuminati. If you, you know, if you want to get in the club, you have to get, like, a, a black eye that's inflicted at once, some sort of sinister... The Rachel actual eyeball, kind. you mean? Or no, no, it's like if you ever if you ever Google like Black Eye Club, it'll be right. like like the Pope and David right. Bowie yeah. and like Dave Beckham and random people, you know, uh, like Pitbull with like a, a black eye, Tony Blair and all these sort of random people. It's actually quite an interesting thing. What was the band? I'm trying to look up. Oh, that's maybe her name. This this. Uh... It was a South African rap rave. Band. Oh yes, I know the one you mean. Um, the Antwoord. The Antwoord, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Well, the the the, the woman in it, Yolandi Vasa. Yes, yes. She 
I don't know how she does that, but she often appears totally black eyelid, uh, eyeballs. That's it's really totally weird. black it's eyeballs. Pr- it could just be, you know, like a, a what do you call it? Contact a, lens. Contact lens, yeah. But it's the yeah, it is, it is, pr- it is pretty freaky. I think they are a truck called Frigo. For, oh, well, they they are a very odd band, but you should ch- check them out. Yeah, I do. Like Enter the Ninja, is uh, yeah. is great. Yeah. It's pretty mad. But anyway, yeah, the Black Eyed Kids, um, it's really an American legend of these strange creatures that resemble children between 6 and 16 with pale skin and black eyes, hence the name Black Eyed Kids, mm. that are reportedly seen hitchhiking or begging or encountered on the doorsteps of residential homes. Now, it was first, that's quite a freaky image, mm. it was first reported by a guy called Brian Bethel. Uh, from Aberdeen in Texas on a ghost uh, related bulletin board on right. the underwebs back in 1998. Um, basically the story goes his um, he had to pay his internet bill. Um, <laughs> it was due. Um, so he apparently he, he did it via a Dropbox apparently. He must have just been dropping in at like a chug or something like that. Um, but he went down to do this at like half night at night. Mm-hmm. Um now he went down and he was startled to hear a knock on the driver's side window of his car. Yeah. And there was two children staring at him f- from the street. Um, both were between sort of ten and fourteen. Boy number one did all the talking, mm. whereas boy number two didn't speak. Right. Um, boy number one was slightly taller and he wore a pullover hooded shirt with a sort of grey check pattern and jeans. Mm. Um. His skin was olive coloured and had curly, medium length brown hair. He exuded an air of quiet confidence. Um, boy number two had pale skin. His primary characteristic seemed to be looking around nervously. <laughs> he was dressed in a similar manner to his p- companion, but his pullover was a light green colour. His hair was a sort of pale orange. Right. Um, now, he was worried that they were going to beg money or ask him to go to the off licence or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but basically, the the main kid starts smiling at him, at him like, like that. Are you doing, son? And he rolled down the window cautiously and said yes. Hmm. And then the child said, hey, mister, what's up? We have a problem. <laughs> his voice was that of a young man, but his diction was very calm and sounded very unusual for like a small child. Okay. Um, These stories were described as kind of a classic examples of creepy pasta. We, yes. We did a... a podcast episode a while back about creepy pasta i never really got it's weird stories i think to be honest yeah i think we were almost too broad um i mean one of the things i've noticed about these podcasts is it works better when you zoom in in, yeah Uh because a lot of these things are so broad you know a a podcast doesn't really do justice to them if you know what i mean Uh um he said we want to say the films but we forgot our money we need to go to our house to get it want to help us out and then he said, uh, Mister, can I see that camera? I won't break it or anything, I promise. Mm. My dad has a camera and he lets me hold it sometimes, I guess, and I take a picture of my dog. Yeah. It wasn't very good because I got my finger in the way and... Um, and he says, oh, well... Um, and then it got very strange because the kid started to stare at them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the, the first kid said, come on, Mister. Um, now, we just want to go to our house and we're just two little boys. But he's begun to feel very sort of nervous about this. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. they're, they're, he just got a very creepy kind of feeling from it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I asked the kid, what movie were you going to see? And the kid said, Mortal Kombat, of course. Um, so they basically kept on and on and trying to get into his car mm-hmm. and been very insistent. And then I noticed something very sinister. Is that their eyes were both cold black. Right. And there's no pupil and no iris. There's just these staring black eyes. Um, and then he, the kid was good on and he says we won't hurt you you have to let us in we don't have a gun <laughs> Yeah, which is a very, very strange thing, thing to for say, the kid yeah. to say yeah. and at this point he got very nervous and then he said we can't come in unless you tell us it's okay let us in so basically what vampires say you have to invite a vampire in don't yeah, you? yeah it's funny but basically he drove off because he got freaked out so um he got talking to his mate about this several days later after okay, this, and his mate right. was called Chad. Hey, he, Chad. He apparently is a into ghost hunting, 
So this guy told him the whole story of what happened. Um, and Chad was chilling with these two women at the time who were both into the paranormal and yeah. that's, you know, into psychic stuff. And he was t- telling Chad the story. And then one of the women chipped in. These children had black eyes. She asked, I mean, all black eyes. And, I, and he said, yes. And she says, well, one night last week, I had a dream about children with black eyes. They're outside my house wanting to be let in, but there was something wrong with them. It took me a while to realise it was the eyes. Mm-hmm. Um, what did you do? He asked. I kept the doors and windows locked. I knew if they came in, they would kill me. And she says, and they would have killed you too if you'd let them under your car. Yeah. So funnily enough, it was that thing. She said it was like like with vampires, you have to like invite them in. Okay. Yeah. That's basically kind of the whole the whole deal with that. Now, is it just an American thing? N- but like, not really, no, because in September 2014, the Daily Star suddenly ran all these stories about this. Yeah. Um, and they mainly seem to be centered. Well, they started off in London, but there, there seem to be a lot of things going on in Staffordshire. Right. For yes. some reason. Panic Chase, I see, is, that's, is mentioned quite a lot. That's yeah. the one, yeah. A spectre known as a black eyed child was spotted on the London Underground. <laughs> a traveller and his wife said they encountered the ghost. Um, on the Capitals Tube Network, um, and again, it was they noticed the sound of a child giggling from a tunnel as they would for their trip train. Um, and the guy said, "We stopped dead in our tracks after noticing her eyes had no color." Now, there's a guy called Lee Brinkley who um, has been investigating a lot of things going on in Canuck Chase, yeah, in uh, Staffordshire. Um, and the Birmingham Mail reported on Lee Brankney's attempt to investigate sightings of black-eyed children. Um, the paper interviewed Brankley. He said an unnamed woman told him that she'd seen a spooky child whose eyes were completely black. No Irish, no white, nothing. Uh, and he seems to think, from his investigations, they started in Cannock Chase in the 1980s. Right. Uh-huh. Um, and he said his aunt... And her friends saw one on mm. Canuck Chess in 1982. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so the Birmingham Mail joined Brankley on a nightly vigil to catch a glimpse of the black eyed kids on Canuck Chess. And the report said there had been sightings also of Slenderman, which was another oh, yeah. character Slenderman, from the, the yeah. Creepy pa- Pastors, as well as a creature that Brankley refers to as the Pigman. Right. Um, so yeah, he, in 2013 he brought out um, a book called UFOs, Werewolves and the Pigman and he wrote about several supernatural folktales and contemporary sightings on and around the Canuck Chase. Um, and he's got a few kind of ideas about what it might be. Um, now, he talked to um, his aunt about this and there was a notorious wave of children that were killed by a guy called Raymond Morris in the area in, 19, in the 1960s. Right. Uh-huh. So he thinks that it could be the, the ghosts of, of that. Yeah. Um, and he also had an idea that it could actually be a chemical leak okay. that had happened in the area that could make people hallucinate. Uh-huh. And he says, can I just make a point of saying I've not sold the story to any newspapers and they've been using me to make money all week. All I did was publish a report from a family member on his blog over a year ago and the press have taken it upon themselves to lift the story and put me all over his front pages. So it was a bit of a strange one, because on the one hand, he was kind of going out with the Birmingham Mail yeah. on his investigations, but then when he got like a lot of attention, he got a bit kind of annoyed with it, like, you know. Mm. Um, so, yeah, he's got different ideas about it. Um, but, yeah, it's a very strange thing. But a lot of people kind of think that... It's, it's one of those kind of funny ones, you know... It, it doesn't seem to have existed before the internet. Right, yeah. It's one of these kind of purely internet kind of driven things. Because there, before your guy talked about it in the late 90s, there wasn't any reports of it. Yeah. You know, it's one of these things that seems to kind of spread, spread out free f- f- the internet. Um, he also thinks it could be linked to a Celtic tribe in the area that were known for their blood sacrifices. Um, so he's not too sure. You know, there's different different. Is there any UFO them. angle? Could they be like aliens or anything like Funnily that? Funnily enough, no, because you'd think that would be an angle that they would they would go off like, you know? Yeah, uh-huh. but it's, um, it's more thought to be ghosts and things More like so, that. thought to be ghosts, yeah. Black-eyed but, children yeah. of Connick Chase. Where was the only place in America then that they were spotted? It was, let's see, again, oh, it was uh, all seems to be... Texas? Texas, yeah, it was Aberdeen, Texas. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like I said, it doesn't. There doesn't seem to be any URL reference before your man did that on, a, on his bulletin board. Mm-hmm. Very odd and scary looking pictures. Yeah. Very scary yeah. looking pictures. Yeah. Maybe we'll stick one up sometime. Uh, okay. Very good. Thank you for listening. We'll be back now with our weird shorts just straight after this. So it's a big thing at the minute. People are trying to get vaccination certificates and vaccination passports without actually getting the vaccine. Uh, and a dentist from Italy has been caught out. Uh, he wanted to try and get the vaccine certificate, but didn't actually want to take the vaccine. So he decided to try and use a fake arm to receive the job. Uh, I can't quite believe how a dentist wouldn't realize he'd be scooped trying uh, this one. But the man from Bayellen uh, tried to use a fake foam arm. A nurse who gave him the injection noticed something was amiss because the skin uh, felt cold and the color wasn't right. The head of the health council for the area said the case could be classified as ridiculous, <coughs> except that we're talking about a gesture of enormous gravity unacceptable for the sacrifice that the whole community is paying for the pandemic he now may face criminal charges reminds me of the father ted episode where they wore fake arms to try and win a football you'd think something. there'd be easier ways to do it to be honest i know yeah <laughs> there you are and i did hear uh, maybe maybe i've got it here no no i haven't got it here but a guy in new zealand got something like 12 vaccines in a day using different people's ids People were paying them to go and get the vaccine, and the doctors were saying, "Would well, that be like incredibly it's probably, dangerous? It's probably incredibly dangerous to get that, that much of the dose." But there, oh yeah, he, he, I can know what happened if you got twelve doses. Were you just like grown overhead? Yeah, perhaps. <laughs> and a snowstorm in northern Denmark has forced six customers and about a dozen employees uh, of a branch of IKEA to stay at the store overnight, turning the store into a giant bedroom. Right. So they. Uh, a, a foot of snow fell and forced employees and customers to remain at the store in Alborg. Uh, store manager Peter Elmo said that the customers could pick the exact beds that they wanted, that they always wanted to sleep in for the night. So they could go around and find the bed that best suited them and uh, try it out for the night. Every year without fail, if there's, whenever there's like a bout of snowy weather, yeah. there's always a story in the UK about a pub that's pub, been, been yeah. snowed on. Uh-huh. Like every year that always happens. And it's always like some pub up in, you know, like the Yorkshire Dells or something like that. There was a pub, I can't remember if it was snowed in or flooded in or something yeah. in the last, uh, it might have been because of storms or something, but there yeah. recently, and there was a, an Oasis tribute act. Uh, oh yes, was, I think I heard uh, something about that, yeah. Was uh, snowed in as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they got, they, people got the drink for free and listened to I, Oasis. I think it was actually the first bit of snow that's wonder yeah mm-hmm. i think it was really early i think it was like the last weekend of november or something mm-hmm. like that the evening was spent watching tv and eating uh, i'm assuming they were eating meatballs meatballs yes mm-hmm. the Lovely. famous meatballs uh, yeah. and elmo's went on to say that the evening w- went super well and all had fun people working at a toy store next to the ik also came in to spend the night that's a good question if you were going to be snowed on where would you where would be the best place to be snowed on if you weren't at home a pub i think yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. But you know, they do sell booze in Ikea, so we might be all right. Oh, yeah. A giant millipede, this is a scary one, thought to weigh at least 50 kilograms and be as long as a car has been discovered fossilized after a section of cliff fell at Hawick Beach in Northumberland. To get so big, the creature would have had to have found a very nutritious, rich, rich plant diet and may even have been a predator who hunted smaller invertebrates or amphibians. Uh, um, Bibians. Right. Giant thing. Uh, only a segment of the creature's exoskeleton was found, but scientists were able to deduce that the animal would have been at least 2.7 metres long. Uh, even the section, which was about 75 centimetres long, was so big it required four people to lift it. Do you want to hear something even scarier, though? What? Um, and it's, it's related to the pa- Paleolithic. Right, the Paleolithic. Um, yeah. Have you ever heard of the little chops, and they call them like, they're like little hobbits? No. Um, they're like one of these kind of missing links of evolution from like millions of years ago. Okay. But there's a new theory that they were driven into extinction. And you know what drove them into extinction? What? Giant storks. Giant storks as in the birds? Uh, yeah. The birds, I Apparently they took... T- because they're, they're only little fellows. They're yeah. little, little pygmies. And apparently they reckon these giant storks took against them. Sorry. 
just wait tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, we'll put in another point there. Don't worry. <laughs> You're all right. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> It's never right. happened before. <laughs> the fossil dates from the Carboniferous period, which dates the creatures to at least 100 million years before the age of the dinosaurs, when the UK landmass would have been near the equator. Uh, it's thought the creatures called Arthropileus would have roamed the Earth for around 45 million years. Right. So that kind of puts, like, how long has a, a humanoids been about? A few thousand? You know, 100,000 maybe? So it's just mind blowing. It's just oh, it's just yeah. it's... oh, this uh, I saw this by this guy and just had to talk about yeah. it. Finally, we have to end with this one. A man has been kicked off a United Airlines flight for wearing a woman's thong as a face mask. <laughs> Adam Jam said the yeah, stunt yeah. was to highlight the absurdity of having to wear masks. He can be seen wearing the pig thong as he takes his seat on a flight from Fort Lauderdale to Washington. But what was the grounds of them? him off because as, as long as he's wearing a face covering that's about right didn't totally cover his mouth oh, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. okay fair enough the 38 year old uh was then asked to leave the plane after a flight attendant told him he wasn't in mask compliance he wanted to i want to say there's nothing more absurd than being made to wear a mask until the plane reaches cruising altitude where i can then order keep ordering drinks uh and keep the mask off so as long as he's drinking knock him back yeah, yeah i think he called them tito's which is in America, they have like vodka called Tito's. Right. right. Strange that they wouldn't go for Russian. But that always makes me. It's strange in America. They have I, their I've own. I've never heard of Tito's. It sounds like an American. Like American vodka vodka. Why wouldn't you just go for Smirnoff? Oh, or, or Finnish vodka. Yeah. Mr. Jen has a habit of doing stunts like this. Uh, and, and he was removed from a Delta Airways flight for doing the same thing. Hmm. Yeah, nice a real good. nice guy to know. Did, did you hear about there? There's a whole incident that went viral there of some woman that was like harassing the bloke because she wasn't wearing a mask, um, and I ended up like biting him. Yes, uh-huh. and it turned out she was like an ex Baywatch actress from years right? ago. Yeah, right. I saw some woman spitting on the guy in a plane. Was I that think, the one? I think it was the same one. Yeah. People are strange. People are very strange. And uh, she was shouting at him for not wearing a mask as she didn't wear a didn't mask. Didn't wear a mask, yeah, it's the same one. I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know. Anyway, thank you for listening. We'll be back again uh, next week. Remember, do like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts so that they will drop into your podcast directory as soon as we upload a new episode. It's usually on a Monday. Keep it weird. Thanks for listening to Weirdly Enough. Remember to subscribe to get the latest edition as soon as it drops. And don't forget to leave a review. Email us about anything we've discussed or with your own weird tale at podcast at weirdlyenough.com.